Hi, I'm Tom Quinn, and this is my presentation on the Korean Free Trade Agreement. Korea is a country with a population of 51 million and has the 11th largest economy in the world. As of March 2015, New Zealand has signed a free trade agreement with South Korea that cuts duties by 65 million in year one. Trade Minister Tim Groves has signed the deal in Korea and said that New Zealand businesses are paying 229 million a year in duties on goods sold to South Korea. A country of this size has huge trade potential for New Zealand and with increasing dietary trends towards more westernised foods, this is very beneficial to the New Zealand agricultural sector as it produces most of New Zealand's exports. It was also predicted that without the Korean-New Zealand Free Trade Agreement, New Zealand exports would have eventually been forced out of the Korean market by competing exporters. It also means less reliability on China's purchasing of our exports and means prices for commodities are less influenced by China's demand. The free trade agreement has huge benefits for New Zealand's dairy and beef industry due, due to their large proportion of exported product which used to have large tariffs in Korea. However, this has a negative effect on some sectors such as deer velvet and seafood. South Korea is New Zealand's fourth largest beef export market by volume, by nearly 110 million of exports in 2013. New Zealand beef faces a 40% tariff when it enters the Korean market, but a free trade agreement will remove this over a 15 year period with previously totaled $43.5 million in tariffs. Beef and Lamb New Zealand said that this, that effectively this is $1.34 of carcass weight when calculating costs of production. It is disappointing that after two years of the free trade agreement, the beef industry has decreased exports in, the, in Korea. The latest export data on New Zealand beef exports said that the Korean exports slid to 11% in volume and 4% in value this February when compared to last year. Other large beef producers such as Australia and the USA currently have significantly lower tariffs than us in, in, in New Zealand which is currently forcing us out of the market. The New Zealand dairy industry is growing more and more reliant on exporting products to China. As a result of this, the price at which farmers receive for their milk is very volatile and easily influenced by China's demand. The size of this country has huge trade potential for New Zealand and with decreasing dietary trends towards dairy products in Korea, our dairy industry can expect to do well off the nation. A trade agreement was signed with New Zealand in December 2015 and as a result the New Zealand, New Zealand dairy exports experienced a 16% 16, 16 growth in food and beverage exports. This is encouraging to see as beef exports have decreased in the same period. A substantial portion of this increased trade has been due to increasing cheese exports in Korea. Korea is New Zealand's fifth largest cheese market and is worth $70 million a year which is compar comparable to the cheese trade with the United States. Dairy trade with Korea is now worth $263 million, with exporters at present paying tariffs between 8 and 176%. In the free trade agreement, some New Zealand primary industry sectors have felt the deal would negatively affect or have no effect on them. For example, frozen deer velvet, which accounts for $20 million, $20 million in exports, has been completely ex excluded from the agreement and 2017 export statistics show that velvet exports in Korea have reduced. However, the industry still remains confident that it claims that, and it claims that the industry is growing. Seafood New Zealand also criticised the deal for excluding frozen squid, which accounts for 28% of seafood trade with South Korea and will continue to suffer a 22% tariff. Current seafood exports to Korea are worth about $50 million annually, down from a high of $70 million, showing the agreement has had a negative effect on the industry. It is interesting to note that initially it would be considered a no-brainer to sign a free trade agreement with Korea, with Korea. Three of the four industries discussed have experienced a decrease in export volume, however there are benefits, other benefits which are good for New Zealand, such as less reliant on China's demand, and a large cost savings on tariffs. Thank you.